we are required to honor God. Make sure that's on. We are required to honor God in our families as well. And uh, and let me add this. That's good. Leave it. Let me add this to this. I believe that you ought to pray every day privately, but you ought to also pray every day if you have a family with your family, and then pray without ceasing throughout the day privately. And then if you can, pray uh, in the evening or at night together. And since most people who are wise are still staying inside, even though the politicians trying to save the economy are opening up everything, and I am very impressed with the hurting, wise American people who are leaving the malls and the stores bare uh, and not going out by the millions because they understand that the plague is still out there. Uh, So uh, pray by yourself. I taught my children to, when they get up in the morning, to, when they were, when they were little, I taught them that they ought to pray privately as soon as they get up in the morning, whisper a prayer before they get up, uh, when they sit up on the bed. And, uh, and then we would gather together for family prayer uh, and our family devotions. And there's great power in family devotions and family altar. Make no mistake about it. And uh, my helping you to do that this morning is at great cost uh, to us here. Because the devil does not want us to help you to do this. Because family devotions and family prayer is the most powerful thing that any family can do. And you will, you will get opposition from the devil in that area. This is the, see, this is the reason why many people don't want to pray. They don't want to pray as a family because the devil fights them hard. Uh, The the devil, you can can see a person earlier in the morning, seem like they're fine. But when it's time to pray and read the Bible, uh, it it looks like they turn into the devil. It could be a wife, a husband, a child, or, or anybody. And it's all designed to hinder you and to keep you from praying, and to get so upset that you don't pray, and you don't read the Word of God. And so, uh, you cannot yield to that temptation. You cannot yield uh, to that distraction if you're going to be victorious in family devotions. The last thing on earth you need to do or want to do is uh, get angry when it's time to pray. Many people do. The devil is going to fight you at this point. And uh, so you need to uh, squelch it. And the way you squelch it is to keep on praying. You pray through. And, uh, and if you have to pray and ask God to cast the devil out of somebody or to rebuke and bind the devil from somebody, you need to do that. Stop believing the lie that your Christian family is supposed to be sweet and wonderful and cuddly all the time. That's just not the case. That's not reality. I know that's a part of the prosperity gospel lie. And it's nothing but a lie. And some of the most messed up families, the most divorced and separated and 
torn up families and step families and all kinds of other foolishness is going on are these prosperity gospel families who don't go by the word. They don't go by what Jesus said. They go by what they said, and it's a mess. It's a whole mess, a whole problem. So he goes on to say at least twice each day in the morning and in the evening, the whole household, the whole family should be gathered to bow before the Lord in prayer to confess their sins. This is very important. Confess their sins. Over here. You need to humble down and confess your sins. You're not going to be a happy camper if you don't do so. You're not going to be a joyous Christian if you don't do so. You're not going to have God's peace and victory if you don't do so. So humble yourself down and confess your sins. And you need to do that in the morning with your family and in the evening. And you need to do it privately as well. You want to have a good day today? Even with the malls not uh, being what they used to be, even though life has totally changed. I talked with my daughter, Danita, today, and I talked with my daughter, Danny. They live on their own. They're doing well, and, and they were doing great before the plague, and I give God the glory. They're still doing well uh, because I taught my oldest Daughter taught all of my children to have your own business. My do- oldest daughter, she, she had three or four businesses before she left the house on her own. And when we sh- ran short of money a few times, she would always have some money. That's, this is before she left the house. And uh, a very industrious child, a very entrepreneur type t- person. And uh, she has her own business today, so she has not missed the beat. She just sits on her bed and operates her business uh, from home, and she does quite well. Now, when a child who is still in her 20s sends you regularly $300, 400 $500 just without my asking to her father, to help him in the ministry and to be a blessing to him, she's doing quite well. She's doing quite well with her business. And she learned all of that business stuff right here uh, in my family, in in, in our household. And so she's doing quite well, and we give God the glory, praise, and honor for that. Even in the plagues, her business is thriving. And I want to encourage you to get your own business as well. Don't wait around for a job. The jobs are not coming back. Your job is not coming back. So you need to pray and ask God to give you an idea. But I told them that that's all good and wonderful, that they're doing well and they're surviving and uh, thriving. But I told both of them. I told my son, too, who's on his own as well. You need to get your own ministry going. My daughter, Danny, has done a whole lot of ministry, and my oldest daughter, when she was home. Uh, she's caught up in business now, but I said, the people are dying all around us. Thousands are dying each day. The best way to reach them, and the only way to reach them right now is online, through social media. And I said, each one of you need to start an evangelistic podcast. If nothing else, just read the Bible and then share the gospel at the end. And, uh, and and you need to uh, write uh, gospel tracts and send them out once a week. You need to continue your writing uh, ministry with books and so forth to instruct people about God, about the Bible, about Jesus, about the gospel, and be a blessing and encouragement to them. Don't sit around in the plague because you can't go out like you normally do. You can't go to movies. You can't go to restaurants. Who wants to be bothered going to a restaurant? You got to sit outside, and you got to have a mask on, and you got to wash, have gloves on. You got to wash your hands and uh, antibacterial, and the, 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 you got, they're going to give you a menu that you can throw away, and all this kind of mess. That's just too much. That's too much. 
And, and my daughter, Anita, said she was not planning on doing anything today. I said, well, serve God. You don't have to wait on your church. Serve God. And nothing will fulfill you like pray. Listen to me. I don't care what kind of situation you're going through. Nothing will fulfill you like serving God, like praying to God, like reading the Bible and uh, sharing the gospel with others. If you don't do stuff like that as a child of God, I'm here to tell you you're going to have a void inside of you. You're going to you're going to be tempted to become depressed, defeated and disgusted. So do something, and everybody can do something today for the glory of God. Every, every individual who's saved ought to have their own ministry, if you will, your own church, your own ministry, your own outreach. If nothing else, do a podcast once a week or every day about your own testimony, about the testimony of other people. Pray every hour. Read the Word of God to people. Don't just do it for yourself. Do it for others. And so, ladies and gentlemen, at least twice each day in the morning, and you need to schedule these things. Don't just do it haphazardly. Schedule these things, man. And schedule your day out so that you will not have a time when you are bored to death, you're depressed. And, and watch this. You know television, the news or Netflix, they, that will not satisfy a Christian. It's okay as a reward at the end of the day after you have served God and you've done something worthwhile to watch something that's decent and so forth. That's okay every now and then, but you know that's not going to satisfy you. It's not going to fulfill you. You can't lay on the couch all day looking at Netflix. You're going to get up dead, dead, feeling dead, and all that mess. So at least twice each day in the morning and in the evening, the whole family should be gathered together to bow before the Lord, to confess their sins, to give thanks for God's mercies, to seek his help and blessing. Nothing must be allowed to interfere with this duty, and everything will try to interfere with this. Every, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just telling you, some of you already know this. And some of you quit a long time ago because it's too hard. But those of you who are new to, to this concept, uh, I'm telling you up front, it's going, it's going to be hard. You would think it's, it would be easy to sit down and pray with your family, but it is not. Keep an eye on these things here. All other domestic arrangements are to bend to this. Now watch this, and that's the end of the quote. But watch this. You'll have people in your family get, get real animated real quick about doing other things like washing dishes. So all of a sudden they want to sew. They want to clean the house and when it's time to pray. And you know why? Because they would rather do that. They would rather all of a sudden wash the dishes and clean the house up and, and find something else to do than to sit down or to kneel down and start praying and reading the Bible. Now that's a fact. It's sad, but it's true. Join me, my beloved, in praying an old English prayer together called the Common Prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have sinned and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no peace and joy in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, Spare thou us, O God, who confess our sins, our faults, and our failures. 
Restore those of us who confess our sins and repent according to thy promises. Declared unto us in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Let's join in prayer for the family. We all know the biggest problem in the church is the family, and sadly what so many pastors have done, instead of dealing with the main issues and the real issues, they've tried to just fix uh, marriages and families where they are instead of dealing with the foundational issues and problems. They have compromised the Word of God to keep the members happy and coming. And uh, not all. We thank God for those who have stood for God's Word. But if you don't do it God's way, people, I know you don't like it. I know you don't want to uh, hear it. But I am banking on the fact, since you are in a plague, that you would at least listen to God's way. And, uh, and pastors are doing what they do. They're trying to fix the situation as it stands. They're trying to make things work. Uh the way they are, whereas a prophet kind of a guy like myself, God, I'm more concerned about what God wants instead of what you want, God's will to be done instead of your will being done, I don't care about your will being done at all, and it's about uh, doing it God's way and not our way, because ultimately if you don't do it God's way, it's just going to be a constant mess. That's just the reality. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not telling you how I feel. I'm telling you what I told my wife before we got married. I looked at her family, her, her family life growing up was shot to hell. I looked at my parents and our family was shot to hell. They, neither family did it the God way, the Bible way. It was just a mess. It's a miracle that I uh, got saved after I left home. It's a miracle of God. And only because I got saved and started reading the Bible, uh, I knew how God wanted me to run the family. My, my, my dad didn't have a chance. My mother didn't have a chance. They, they were never taught the Bible. And, and, and that's probably the case in your family. So let's pray for the family, and let's read, I think we're going to just read one verse, and that is Ephesians 5.33, because it deals with the wife and the husband. If you don't want to do it God's way, and you still want to do it your way, you don't want your husband to hear it God's way, you don't want your wife to hear it God's way, that's fine, that's fine, okay? I'll still be here. Because I assure you that God is the one who has me here. Not me, myself. But this is, we, we didn't need to add anything else to our schedule. But God put it on my heart to do this, to help people get through this time. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you would heal Lord, every Christian marriage and family based upon confession of sin, based upon repentance of sin, and based upon uh, doing it your way, found in Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6. Without compromise, without manipulation, without game playing, without lying, without dishonesty, without deceit, without catering to the woman 
and disrespecting the authority that you have placed in the man. And, Lord, I already know this is not popular and will never be popular in this sin-cursed world. But I pray for those who uh, love you and they want to do it your way, young and old and middle-aged. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> for the salvation of those families that don't know your Savior. Forgive us of, uh, of our sin as Christians for not obeying your great commission and your great commandment to witness to those who are lost. Those families who don't even know about Ephesians chapter 5 and 6 don't even know you as Savior. And so, Holy Father God, we pray sincerely that in these last days you would raise up, Lord, laborers into the field, including us, to be the shining lights and witnesses that you want us to be see the soul saved and families and the whole household saved and at least have a chance to do family, to do marriage and family right according to your word and your will. <clears throat> in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Today in the family verses, we're just reading one verse. It deals with the husband and the wife. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. This is part of a passage that I have read to my family every morning, along with other scripture passages every morning for 33 years. Uh, our family is that bad. That's why God led me to do that. And, uh, and if I had not done it, along with prayer, our marriage and family would not have survived. And not only, and by the way, not only will your marriage and family survive, you will thrive and you will do things for the glory of God that will blow your mind. He'll, he'll guide you to do things uh, uh, and to help thousands and even millions of people uh, if you do this every morning. Nevertheless, the Bible reads, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. This is not a suggestion, even as himself. This is a commandment by God. This is a commandment. This is not uh, a suggestion. God wants you to do this, and this is not based upon your feelings. It's not based upon uh, how she acts, sir. This is between you and God. And see, this will secure and guarantee that the marriage survives. And God, listen to me very carefully. You may not want the marriage to survive for whatever reason, but God wants that marriage to survive. And, and one of the reasons why we're in this plague is because we have not done it God's way. And God is sick and tired of children's lives that he blessed you with in your marriage to be wasted. Some are molested. Some are stolen, some are killed because of selfish, childish husbands and wives who don't want to do it God's way, they want to do it their way, and when they get sick and tired of the person that they used to love, they want to go try somebody else and start a step family. And God is not pleased with it. I'm talking about people in the church, I'm not talking about the lost people. I'm talking about people in the church. I don't care how God, uh, how I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care how you feel about it. You need to do it God's way, sir. Come on, well, I, I, I she just was not doing, doing it for me anymore, and uh, she didn't. Uh, do this and that, and so I, I, I met this beautiful young lady at, on the job, and so forth and so on, and and then one thing led to another. And and you, you, sir, will get in trouble with God, and that's why you're in trouble right now. So let me read that again. This is a commandment. This is not a suggestion. Stop reading other people's books 
and read the book of God, read God's word. Stop reading other folks' books, man, on how to be a husband. God tells you very succinctly and very clearly how to be a good husband. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And watch this now. This is not based upon your feelings. Well, I don't feel like I love her. That has nothing to do with it. This is agape, the God kind of love. This is the kind of love that God has for you, that Jesus Christ has for you. Do you want God and Jesus to divorce you? Perish the thought. That's not happening. If you're born again and saved, they're not going to quit you. They will chastise you. They will rebuke you. They will withhold blessings from you. But they're not going to divorce you. And the last part of that verse is, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is a commandment. This is not a suggestion. Ma'am, it doesn't matter how he makes you feel now and he doesn't excite you anymore and all that foolishness. All that's going to be dead in about a year anyway or less. Okay? We thank God for those who still have it going on like that after several years. I told you that I was in a city one time and uh, uh, I don't eat at McDonald's. My children do from time to time, not now, but back in the day, pre, pre uh, plague. And I was walking out. We were doing. I, I go to do work on the computer. They have some of the best internet. And so while they're eating, I'm working on the computer. I went out to the car to get something, and this was there was this old couple. They were smiling and they were holding hands. You rarely see this, but when you see it, it's a special thing. And I and I, I I chatted with them and said, I see y'all holding hands and everything. Oh yes, oh yes. And and and, and I said that's so wonderful, that's so beautiful. And uh, and and, and uh, he asked me, uh, don't you hold hands with your wife? I said no, sir, I don't. And there's no need to be lying. We don't when we're going into the store. No, I'm, we don't we don't hold hands. But I'm glad to see them holding hands. And I thank God for all couples who got it like that. I mean, they had already been married for about 40 years. They were old. They were up there. I was shocked they were going into McDonald's. But uh, they were going in there for a, a little lunch. And they were just as happy as they can be and in love, been married for many years. And, and, and that's how it ought to be. And just because yours may not be that way, for whatever reason, thank God for those who have it like that. And you need to be honest about yours because you're never going to reach that. You're never going to make it if you're not honest about the situation. Be transparent. Christians ought to be transparent, just like the transparent gold streets of heaven. So do you respect your husband this morning? It has nothing to do about a feeling or what he said to you or whatever. You can, you can forget that. Has nothing to do with it. He doesn't make me feel good anymore. He doesn't turn me on anymore. He does not do it for me anymore. Who cares? Do your job. You respect your husband. You have reverence for him. You don't try to embarrass him in front of his friends or embarrass him by uh, whoring around with another man, uh, looking at another man, or some foolishness like that. Uh, being disrespectful in front of his children, and you wonder why the children don't respect you. Because they never saw you respect your authority. So they don't feel like they ought, they have to, are obligated to respect you. They should, but they don't feel that way. See, you reap what you sow, whether you know why or not. So go somewhere in your closet if you need to, husbands and wives. Confess your sins, husbands, of not loving your wife by choice. Not by, by feeling, but by choice. You choose to love. You choose to deal with them and their idiosyncrasies. 
and craziness. Because some people are crazy. You got to still love them. Some people don't act like they have good sense sometimes. You still got to love them. That's just, that's just, that's just what you got to do because sometimes you don't act like you have good sense in God's sight. But he still loves you. And he's long-suffering with you and he's patient and he's, he shows loving kindness. And, and wife, you need to go somewhere in your closet and pray and ask God to help you to respect your husband and to honor your husband. If that's if you want peace in your home and you want order in your home and then you want productivity in your home, laying around looking at Netflix all day is not productivity. Oh, I, I don't chalked up six movies a day. That's foolishness. You're frying your brain. You're grilling your brain out of your body. <clears throat> you don't, uh, no, no. That, that, you, you, that's ridiculous. That's not, you're not accomplishing anything. Use your divine, your God-given gifts and talent to do something great. You haven't even made masks for your children and for your husband. Got them wrapped up in a T-shirt. Do something constructive with your life. You can enjoy, listen to me, you can get a lot out of this place if you would just... Go ahead and make yourself a schedule and do what the Bible says. Pray with your family in the morning. Uh, make sure your children are doing what they're supposed to do. And by the time you finish doing everything that God wants you to do, buddy, you, you have forgotten about the plague, and you're ready now to sit down and recline and look at a movie. One, no binging. And you may have done that the first week or two, thinking that this is going to end. It's not ending. You can't do that now. You've got to get busy. You've got to do some things. So, beloved, our devotional passage for today is Psalm 51 through 6. Here you go. I am. The mighty God, even the Lord, let me repeat that because some people missed it. Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness. For God is judge himself, Selah. Now, Dr. Matthew Henry wrote in his commentary, this psalm is a psalm of instruction. It tells of the coming of Christ and the day of judgment in which God will call men to account. All the children of men are concerned to know the right way of worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. In the great day our God shall come and make those hear his judgment who would not hearken to his law. Happy are those who come into the covenant of grace by faith in the Redeemer's atoning sacrifice. 
and show the sincerity of their love by fruits of righteousness. If you love God, if you love Jesus Christ, dear friend, it will show in your fruits of righteousness. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? When God rejects the services of those who rest in outside performances, he will graciously accept those who seek him aright. That is our devotional passage for today. And by the way, one of the reasons why God laid on my heart to do this is because uh, there are many single people out there uh, all around the country and around the globe for whatever reason. And uh, it's hard to do devotions by yourself. It's, it's, it's hard when you're in a family. It's especially hard when you are alone. And so if you know single people who need somebody to pray with them uh, and to read the Word of God together, This is a good service to do it with. A good time of the day. Because most people don't get up until about this time anyway. You can actually do it in bed. You can do it at the dining room table. You can listen. You can follow along. You can pray with us. You can be a part of it. You can participate without doing every little detail. You can be making your coffee at the same time if you need to. But uh, you need to get under the sound of the Word of God and prayer in the morning time. Let's join, uh, join me, rather, in praying for all Christians and praying for all people, and especially for the families that are hurting uh, through the loss of loved ones, uh, who have died in the coronavirus plague. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, for all Christians everywhere, and we pray together. Help us to pray, to seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves. before you and help us to get back to you our first love and holy father god we praise you and we thank you for providing for us we pray for we, we thank you for salvation family uh, uh, financial material function and provision blessings that you bestowed upon us down, down through and, Lord, we thank you for your right hand and, and, and just had just a blast doing for years and years and years that, Lord, have been taken away from us. Help us not to get bitter, but never deserve them in the first place. Help us to just be thankful. Help us to remember the right of God. I thank you and I praise you for all of the wonderful times we have enjoyed uh, restaurants and uh, uh, going to the library and so many wonderful things down through the years, going to Starbucks, going to Barnes & Noble to sit half the day and read and write, things we used to do. That we can't do today in a, in a safe way. So thank you for those things. And Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now for everybody in the government, from the president on down across uh, all areas of government, all the way down to police officers and sheriffs. On the globe, we pray for Salvation, spiritual, family, protection, all of these people. Lead them, guide them, direct them in the way that you want. 
want them to go so that we can live in a peaceful fashion. And uh, hope God, we pray that you would particularly give our government leaders knowledge and understanding in dealing with the situations that they're facing today. And Holy Father God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for all other nations in the same way as we pray for ours. And Lord God in heaven, we pray for the salvation of those who are lost. Lord, in this country and around the globe and in the media, we pray for the revival of those who are saved in this country and around the globe and in the media as well. And uh, Holy Father God, we now pray, uh, Lord, based upon your holy word, First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Join me, my friends, in praying for an ever-increasing number and list of Christians and churches and families of the people who have died in the coronavirus plague. Please understand, Already, three to 4,000 people are dying a day from the true count in America. Thousands more are dying around the world. And we're praying for all people. But I want you to understand, many people have died who named the name of Christ. Many pastors, many bishops, many ministers, many elders, many church members have died from this plague. So we pray for the family, friends, and church family of Washington State member Nancy Nikki Hamilton. We pray that you will comfort that family, strengthen that family, help them to turn their eyes towards you, Lord Jesus Christ, for salvation and for comfort, and to your holy word, the scriptures, for comfort. We pray the same for the family, friends, and church family of California church member Don Sperling. We pray for the family, friends, and church family of Milwaukee Church Deacon Lonnie Kincaid. We pray for the family, friends, and church family of Georgia medical technician and devout Christian Deidre Hurd. We pray for the family and friends of Missouri nurse Judy Wilson Griffin. And we pray still, Lord, that they would turn their eyes towards you, Lord Jesus, for salvation and for comfort, and to turn towards your holy word for comfort. Comfort them as only you can. And we pray for the salvation of every soul in these families. And Lord, give them the grace to overcome this tragic, painful kind of death. We pray for the family and friends of New York, Dr. Frank Gabrin. We pray, Lord, for the family and friends of Florida nurse uh, Araceli uh, Budia uh, Alagan. We pray, Lord, for the family and friends of New York nurse Teresa Lococo and for the family and friends of New York physician's assistant Madhavi Aya. And we pray, Lord, for the family and friends of New York nurse Frida Ockman. We commit these souls into your hands. And, uh, Lord, we commit our souls into your hands. Prepare us, Lord, for good days and bad days as you gave me this prayer well before, two years before the plague. Prepare us, Lord, for celebrations and tragedies. Prepare us, Lord, for weddings and funerals. Prepare us, Lord, for life and death. And now we pray, Lord, for the people who have sent in prayer requests recently directly to us to pray for them as you have blessed us with the privilege of praying for literally thousands upon thousands of people down through the years all around the world. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor for giving us that privilege. We pray for Carrie to accept Jesus Christ as his Savior. Heal him of the coronavirus disease. We pray for Vicki 
bestow wisdom, strength, understanding, and obedience upon all government and ministry leaders. Lord, bless and protect Pastor Evans, his family, church and medical team. Heal Ambar completely and give her relief. Please open ears and hearts to the truth of the gospel in this time and for this time of desperation to lead people to Jesus Christ. Open hearts to give to Joshua's ministry. Protect Joshua, his family, all the people who are critical support services that are reaching and all first responders protect all people from the coronavirus disease who have not been uh, affected and give quick and strong recovery to those who have been diagnosed. We pray for Paul. Uh, Please provide for him, his family, and his ministry. Protect them from the coronavirus disease and bless them with the supplies they need to help the people around Uh, the world and around them. Provide for all people in Bangladesh with the necessities they need and stop the coronavirus from spreading in Bangladesh. We pray for Nita for her tonsil surgery to be a success, work a miracle and heal her tonsils, regrow her bone and gum tissue, Uh, heal her of kidney cyst infections in diverticulitis in her intestines and heal all other problems and pain in her body uh, and everyone else from the coronavirus disease and uh, any other illness and have the coronavirus uh, disease to lead to countless salvations all over the world. <clears throat> we pray for William, for his mom, Carol, to be healed and help her to feel better for everyone else who has the flu or the coronavirus disease to get better as well. And we pray for Naeem, remove the coronavirus from the world and provide all people living on daily wages with the necessities that they need. Provide Naeem's ministry with supplies to help others. And Lord, we pray for all others who have sent in prayer requests not only now, recently, but down through the years. Comfort them as only you can. And Lord, hear and answer their prayers and hear and answer our prayers for them. We pray for salvation, spiritual, family, uh, financial, material, protection and provision, blessings upon each and every one of them. And uh, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for the people who have trusted you as Savior, now through this ministry, we pray for uh, AJ, we pray for Jasmine, we pray for Motaz, we pray for Dakota, we pray for Daniel, we pray for Dan, and we pray for Marlene. And Lord, we pray now for the people who have rededicated their life to you, recommitted their lives to you through this ministry. We pray for Brenda, we pray for Tito, Ezekiel, uh, Tinio, uh, Tino, Julie, Don, and Subda. And, Lord, we pray for all of the others. And, Lord, we just, as we're just naming a few today, and we pray for all of the others who have gotten saved through this ministry and who have come back to you through this ministry and through the preaching of the gospel. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help them to grow in the faith as well. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Our devotional reading for today is titled, Made to Last Forever, Part 1, From the Purpose Driven Life by Dr. Rick Warren. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says, God has planted eternity in the human heart. Abraham Lincoln said, Surely God would not have created such a being as man to exist only for a day. No, no, man was made for immortality. This life is not all there is. Life on earth is just the dress rehearsal before the real production. You will spend far more time on the other side of death in eternity than you will here. Earth is the staging area, the preschool, the tryout for your life in eternity. It is the practice workout before the actual game. 
the warm-up lap before the race begins. This life is preparation for the next. At most, you will live a hundred years on earth, but you will spend forever in eternity. Your time on earth is, as Sir Thomas Brown said, but a small parenthesis in eternity. You were made to last forever. The Bible says God has planted eternity in the human heart. You have an inborn instinct that longs for immortality. This is because God designed you in his image to live for eternity, even though we know everyone eventually dies. Death always seems unnatural and unfair. The reason we feel we should live forever is that God wired our brains with that desire. Uh, don't press down on that. One day your heart will stop beating. That will be the end of your body and your time on earth. But it will not be the end of you. Your earthly body is just a temporary residence for your spirit. The Bible calls your earthly body a tent, a tabernacle, but refers to your future body as a house. The Bible says when this tent we live in, this tabernacle we live in, our body here on earth is torn down. God will have a house in heaven for us to live in a home he himself has made, which will last forever. And so, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please understand that Jesus Christ says to you, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shalt be saved. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the eternal burning hell and saved to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shalt be saved. Yeah.